In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through a real client project that I've been working on. I'll show you what I get from the client, how I manage the project, what I came up with, how I presented it for feedback, and how I deliver the final deliverables to the client in the end. But before we dive in, I wanna let you know that I have a new class out on Skillshare all about getting organized in Figma. I go through my whole Figma process with you in detail and even provide a project template that you can use. It's a short class, but it's jam-packed with super practical tips and tricks. So I'll leave a link in the description box below for you to check that out. All right, now let's talk about this client project. First, let's talk about who this client is. So the client is Teachery. They're an online course platform, but they're different from like Skillshare and Udemy because teachers will pay Teachery monthly to host as many classes as they want on the platform, but Teachery doesn't take a cut of what is earned on the platform. So it's really just the monthly fee that teachers pay. How did I get this client? Well, that actually goes back about five or six years. I joined a business coaching program taught by the founders of Teachery, Jason and Caroline Zook. So I've been in their community for years now and I have been using Teachery for quite a while. And so yeah, I already knew them. I'm in a Slack channel with them. And whenever they saw that I quit my full-time job and was looking for freelance work, they reached out. And so it was perfect timing and now I'm excited to be working with them. So what is the scope of the project? Well, on the highest level, they hired me on a monthly retainer. So they pay me $1,200 a month just to work on Teachery every single month, um, whatever they need me to do. Usually it's one or two new features or capabilities that they want to add to the platform. So how it works is every month, Jason, one of the founders, will send me a very detailed Notion doc of what they want to add to Teachery. And we kind of call them featureies because there are new features being added to Teachery. So he will send me a featurey doc and I'll go through it and read what um, it's all about, what they want to add, and they're really good about thinking ahead about how the feature will affect other things in the pipeline and all that. So I'll just go through, read it, make sure I understand it. I can ask any questions in the Notion comments and just make sure that we're all on the same page before I dive into work that month. Which leads into the question, how do I manage my time for this project? So since it's a monthly retainer, it's really easy for me to kind of plan out when I'm going to do what. So I've set myself mini deadlines. What I try to do is read through the Notion docs within the first week so that I don't let a week in the month go by before I know what I'm getting myself into. Then the next mini deadline is the 15th of the month or about halfway through the month. I want to have finished a good solid draft of the feature or features that I'm working on for that month. So basically my first stab at the designs. In order to get that done, I will go into my calendar at the beginning of the month and schedule in at least two or three solid working sessions. Usually those are three to four hours long, sometimes longer, like a full day. I'll sometimes dedicate to Teachery if it's like a bigger feature and something that I really wanna focus on. Then I'll also schedule out one or two shorter working sessions for the last week of the month and that is set aside for revisions. One common question that I got is how I do research for this project and the truth is I don't always do research and that's okay. I only do research when I have very specific questions that I need answered. For example, recently we were deciding between two words to use, dashboard or hub. And so I did some very casual research just asking around what people's interpretations of each of those words were to see which one maybe fit better for what we were working on. I also sometimes do competitive analyses. So for example, you'll see when I dive into the designs that I looked at Teachable 
um, as kind of a competitor to see what they were doing as it relates to a specific feature that I was working on. So why don't I do user testing? Well, this is a small platform and a very small company. It's just a husband and wife duo, a developer that they use, and sometimes me, a designer who they use as well. It is not a big company with tons and tons of resources. And this is the case with a lot of my clients, to be honest. The founders look at the data and are always talking to customers about what they want to see in the platform. That in itself is research. If we run into an issue or a question that we're not really sure how users will react to, then we will test it if the stakes are high enough. Otherwise, we'll just launch it and monitor the effects or ask for customer feedback. Whether or not or how you do user testing should be a joint decision between you and your team and stakeholders. Don't just blindly follow a process without thinking critically about it. Okay, so let's look at one of these features, look at the design problem and how I approached it. Okay, so there are several features that I've worked on so far, but I'll show you the one that I think is the most fun. And if there are any other ones that you guys wanna see, let me know in the comments. This one is a custom course hub. So first I will kind of just show you over here the notion that I get from the client. So it just has the name of the feature here. And if you scroll down, just a quick sort of intro about what the feature is. Um, and currently they have a workaround for this. So basically what they do is, well, let me first explain what exactly this feature is. So basically if you are a teacher on Teachery, um, maybe you wanna have a hub or a place where all of your classes live, where someone can go click in and buy them individually or whatever it might be. Um, so that's essentially what it is. It's similar to something in Teachable called the Your School. So that is what the feature is. And the workaround that Teachery has for this now is basically creating a course that houses all your courses. So it's a course and then each lesson is basically just a link to individual courses. So obviously they knew that wasn't the absolute best solution. So this feature is to make a dedicated space for teachers to create a hub and teachers can actually create more than one hub if they want to. Maybe they have design classes and coding classes or something like that. So they want to split them up. So that's what this feature is that I worked on. And so um, Jason, the client, basically outlines all of maybe some of the biggest questions that they've thought about throughout this feature. This is not normal for a client, to be totally honest. Usually clients don't think as in depth in depth as this and they don't go this far to document everything that they're thinking. Um, so. Honestly, this is so ideal and it's why I really love working with them. Um, so if you do work with a lot of clients and you can encourage them to have just as much detail as possible when they go and sort of like ask you to build something or to design something, um, it's always ideal. So anyway, they go through and they sort of ask or answer some big questions. So for example, how customizable should the dashboard be? We decided that it really shouldn't be too, too customizable. When you create a course in Teachery, there's a ton of things you can customize, but we decided that when you create a hub, it should be a little bit more streamlined so that someone could get a hub up and running in like five minutes. Um, and yeah, just some other things here like dashboard actions, what you should be able to do within this hub. We went back and forth between hub and dashboard and ended up going with hub. Um, yeah, and so you can see here that I have made some comments on some things, um, just a back and forth. Again, a really good way to sort of do that asynchronous communication between the designer and the client. And yeah, this is essentially what I get. He encouraged me to um, do some sleuthing and look at Teachable. So that is exactly what I did. Let's go over to Figma and actually start looking at what I put together. 
So here is just a little section of um, some explorations that I did and just some notes that I made. So, you know, you can pause and read these if you want, but essentially I'm just kind of documenting what I'm thinking about as I'm exploring Teachable and Teachery and like going through maybe how I would use this feature. Um, and I'm just grabbing some screenshots and stuff like that, some components from elsewhere in this file. Um, so yeah, let's actually go a step backwards and talk about this file. So with this client, um, again, a really nice thing. They already had a Figma file. Um, one of the founders, Caroline, is a designer. So she designed, you know, kind of the basis of Teachery, the entire, you know, um, platform essentially, but now they hired me to kind of take it from here and just do these small new little things that come up. So she already has tons and tons of components built out, um, color schemes, buttons, all of that. It's all, you know, pretty well organized. And, um, yeah, so this is where I pull components from. I try to only create new components when I need to. And usually what I'll do is I'll grab an existing component, detach it, and then make any changes that I need to make. Um, and then you see over here, these are new pages that I created. And I just put a little emoji of my face next to these just so that, you know, we all can remember which ones I'm working on. So yeah, let me walk through what I presented to Jason and Caroline in my Loom video. This was the first pass and then they provided some feedback and I have not yet gone through the feedback yet. So let me just kind of walk you through this in case you're interested. Um, so this is your course hubs page. What we did was we added an additional nav item up here. So this course hubs didn't exist before and now it does. So this is a dedicated space for this feature and you can create as many hubs as you want. So this is one that already exists. It has a banner, the name of the hub, and the link to the hub so that a teacher can easily grab this and send it out, share it on social, whatever, and then an edit button. And you can always create a new one. So then let's say you're creating a new one, then you will name it here. You can always change the name. Once you name it, then you can go over to build it. So here on the left, this follows a very similar flow as you would when you're creating a new course on Teachery. So this already existed. I just had to use it and tweak it a bit for the purpose of this new hubs feature. So first step is to build it. You can add courses. You can, um, you know, add any text. Then, okay, wait, let's see what's next. Oh, this is adding courses. So once you hit this button, then you'll see this page pop up and basically you can select, this is the selected state. You can select as many classes as you wanna add and then add them to your hub. And this will just populate with all of the courses that you've created on Teachery. So then once you've added some courses, it might look like this. And so then if we zoom in here, what you have to do is set your button links. So basically, where should the buy now button link to? You can link it to a payment page from Teachery and all of that. Um, you can link learn more to a sales page, whatever you want to do. So that is the modal that will allow you to do that. And then you can style your hub. So like I was saying, the styling options are more limited for this, which is good. It's just nice and simple. So you can style your buttons, your link text, your borders, and your background. Um, and then we've just got some settings here. Um, and this is what it could look like if someone actually visits your hub page. So this is what it looks like, not in the editing teacher view, but in the customer or student view. So once I've gone through and done the first iteration of this feature, how do I share it with the client for feedback? For this, I always use Loom. So I'll just talk through my designs while showing them on screen and walk through why I made the decisions that I did. Sometimes I even use Loom to pose questions or show two different options to see what they like better. This is when I wanna 
point out that throughout the whole time I've been working with Jason and Caroline, I have only ever had one real-time meeting. They're currently in Europe, and honestly, real-time meetings just aren't the best use of time for most small teams like this. So using Loom and Notion makes it so that I can work on my own time, and so can they, and we can still be super efficient with these projects. Usually they will leave any feedback or extra to-dos for me in Notion, just kind of at the bottom of the page. So how do I deliver the final designs? Well, for this client specifically, they already have all their designs in Figma, and Figma is what their developer is used to using to build from. So I just use that new page that I created with my little emoji next to it and a descriptor of what the feature is, and I'll organize my screens as best I can, label them accordingly so that it's really clear what's what, and a lot of times add little sticky notes or descriptions so that someone coming in who doesn't really know the background would be able to understand this and build from it. Okay, and that's about it for my process. I think I answered most of the questions that you guys asked over on Instagram. If you wanna see more behind the scenes of this project specifically, please let me know. They're so generous to let me share these designs with you, even though some of these features aren't live yet. I'd also encourage you to check out Teachery if you're interested in hosting courses online on your own website. I've been using it for a while and I really, really love it. I'll leave a link for you to check it out below. And also also feel free to check out the two classes that I have hosted on Teachery. I will also link those below. If you like this video, then you probably are into processes and Figma, so I'd highly recommend checking out my latest class on Skillshare, which covers both. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on all my future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!